you just gotta believe. Your University of St. Francis football team never gave up and came up with the 22-19 victory over number 20 Siena Heights this past Saturday in the program's first ever overtime win at Bishop Darcy Stadium. With a minute left to play in regulation, the Cougs had to drive 68 yards and get eight points. Oh yeah, this game had a little bit of everything. Well, I thought our defense uh, played superbly once again. I think Marcus Stepp needs a red cape. I mean, it was like from, I've never seen such effort and big plays. Of course, Dunton, 22 tackles, National Player of the Week. You know, we're banged up there, uh, but Boyd had guys step up and tremendous performance. Uh, offensively, we went against another great defense, maybe maybe the best we've seen. So, you know, we're not in our mojo, you know, all day offensively. And then uh, cra crazy, crazy, crazy. I don't know, I've had 460 football games I've coached in, and that one well, ended just wildly in favor of us. Uh, you know, the, the opponent, I think, um, decided all they had to do was take knees and run the clock out. But they chose to score, and, and I think that was a, a pole move, try to get a, a solid victory to move up in the rankings. But it gave us an opportunity. I mean, President, well, you know, they struggled all day moving the football. But one thing you can't, uh, you, you can't overlook, man, is uh, the character and the grit of, of our players. Uh, like you say, 60 plus yards away, no timeouts, a minute 14 on the clock after the score. And uh, you know, we have a sack, we have a couple incompletes. We are fourth and 17 with no timeouts. Uh, Crable extends a play with his feet, scrambles, makes a play. Dylan Hunley uh, ran scramble drill. He, he had a, an out and was covered on the scramble. He adjusted properly. Crable makes the throw, got a first down, 27 yards. Next two plays, two Crable scrambles, gets us down in the red zone, get a personal foul, which was obvious. So now we're, we're down, you know, inside the five yard line. And uh, we, we had our little gadget plays that we were going to use. Uh, the first one, PJ Dean, Dylan Hunley for the touchdown. Um, we used back in 2015 against our friends from Indianapolis for a score. And then the two point conversion, uh, when we pulled out of a playbook from about 30 years ago. And, uh, Rixey made a play, a defender in position to make a tackle. He makes a move and hits Will Christman in the end zone for the two-point conversion. So now you go into overtime. So now the defense lights up again. You know, Schumacher gets the, the interception down there in overtime. They didn't even get a chance to kick the field goal. And um, we pick up a first down, get it nice and close. I chose to kick on third down so they wouldn't have the block team out. Gavin uh, set the school record with his fourth uh, field goal. And uh, I, I believe, I do believe this, that that was probably better uh, than a 40-point than win. I mean, we needed that electrical charge and to find a way to win. That's what you got to do. I mean, you know, you're going to have adversity, you're going to have weather, you're going to have great uh, opposition. Um, the last month of our schedule is tougher than any playoff run. So, you know, we, uh, we found a way to get a win and uh, hopefully get back on track this week. Getting back on track in the MSFA Mideast is no easy task, but USF now is the only team to play all the NAIA top 25 teams in its division. True, the Cougs are beat up a bit, and have been relying heavily on running back P.J. Dean, who started the season third on the depth chart and now ranks number four in the division in rushing yards per game. Well, a year ago, he's recovered from knee surgery. I mean, he's walking around gimpy, he's on crutches, and you, you know, he's struggling through therapy. You know, all summer long, he was never at full speed. I, I was doubtful uh, whether he was gonna be able to make it. 
but he kept chipping away at it. Um, had some academic issues, took care of that, got himself eligible in summer school. Um, boy, the, talk about some grit and desire there. Uh, he came in this week and he's already watched film on the opponent. And that tells me, man, he, he's into this, he's getting everything he's got. Uh, go into this year, you know, Justin Green, probably a front runner for National Player of the Year, goes out to game two and hasn't fully recovered yet. Eli Wallace starts game the next game. He goes out with an ACL. So here's PJ that probably wasn't at 100%. I'm not so sure he is, but sure playing like it. He steps up and seizes the, the opportunity and uh, has really performed remarkably. I was upset about it, but I understood why I was down in the depth chart so, depth chart so deep. So I worked my tail off this summer. Uh, the whole team worked their tail off. I worked my tail off to get back to where I needed to be, and I know I still got some work to do. I'm not as fast and I can't move as well as I did this freshman year, but man, it, it feels good to be back where I need to be, and it just, it's just a good feeling overall to get back, and I'm glad I'm able to show what I can do. Me being able to produce for the team, I mean, it all starts up front. You know, I'm able to have these good runs, but people don't look at behind the scenes of what our linemen do to, so I can have a good run or what our receivers do. Um, being able to step up for the team this year, though, it's it feels good because Jay Green's a hell of a running back, so being able to step up in his place, um, I feel grateful. That's really about it. I feel grateful. and. Um, I hope to continue to get better because you said I was a fourth in the MSFA. I want to be first. <laughs> we all want to be first, so we're going to keep working. Dean's been doing it, carrying the load for the Cougar run game, and this past Saturday, he reverted back to his freshman year. In the biggest game of 2015, Dean found receiver Cody Appenzeller in the back of the end zone for a touchdown. He drew upon that experience and recorded his second career touchdown pass in the win over Santa Heights. I did. When Coach said he was putting in a jump pass, it made me remember first year when we did do that against Marion. And uh, I just remember the confidence I had going into Marion, thinking that we were going to run it, and we did. So, I mean, it was just a good moment overall for us and the team. I ran it a couple times in high school, so the coaches had the confidence in me to throw the ball when it really counted, and uh, I'm grateful for that. Uh, being in that position, it's it was kind of nerve wracking just because it was the last drive. You feel like it's on you if you mess up, but the linemen, the receiver, they did what they needed to do and they gave me some open space to jump up in there and throw it to Hunley again. So I felt confident. It's supposed to be set up like a run. I'm supposed to make it like a run. And uh, I got the ball. I got to the line of scrimmage. I didn't see nothing at first. So I kind of bounced it out a little bit and I see Hunley wide open, which Man, that was crazy. I seen them wide open, numbers and everything. So I was just able to deliver them the ball. And now the Cougs hope to deliver win number six on the season this Saturday on Senior Day versus Missouri Baptist. The Spartans are 2-5 and five on the season with a 21-7 loss versus Siena Heights and a 28-7 loss this past Saturday at Concordia. Well, they are approaching the next level. Uh, they're struggling on offense a little bit. Their run game is strong, their pass game is not. Uh, but their defense is outstanding. We should definitely not take them lightly. Uh, their defense does not look bad at all. I mean, there's a reason why they competed with us last year. Their defense is not bad at all. Um, I haven't really looked much at their offense, but from a defensive standpoint, we got to come in and don't take them lightly, really, because we've seen what that has happened what has happened when we take teams lightly. Under Coach Donnelly and his 40 years of coaching experience, USF never takes a team lightly. Coaches learn from some of the best that have ever roamed the sidelines and was saddened by the passing of John Gagliardi a week ago, who is college football's all-time wins leader with 489. He was a friend to Coach D. Yeah, I've had opportunities, small college guy, Catholic school. I've talked with John numerous occasions at coaches' conventions, and what a wonderful gentleman. Great football coach, great person, great leader of young men. 
uh, learned a lot from just sitting around and having a cup of coffee. The only advice I'd say, treat everybody the way you'd like to be treated. That's what, that's what I, I, I said that to my players over and over, year in and year out. Well, he was a guy that started back in the 40s, so he was coaching football before I was born. And anytime you get an opportunity to spend 10 minutes with somebody like that, you can learn a whole lot. He was a guy that really believed that character development and inspiring guys to be the best they could be was a far greater than going out and practicing blocking and tackling every day. Uh, never wore pads. Players never went out in full gear. Saved it for game day. Probably the most radical was no tackling in practice. People say, how can you possibly do that? There were so many injuries in practice that it would hurt us in game time. So all we would work on in practice is defeating the blocking scheme, getting the proper pursuit, all the kind of things, mental, you might say. You know, it influenced uh, me. I mean, we still, we go out in pads a couple of days a week. But uh, when I started coaching football, you you know, football practice, you were padded up and you were going at it every day. But it changed uh, a, a lot of things in my way of thinking uh, because it's so true. I mean, you know, you, you got to know the fundamentals, you got to know your assignments and the scheme and the game plan of things. But bottom line, it, it's, it's about uh, making sure that spark gets ignited and uh, begins to, to burn with a blaze. And uh, boy, John was able to do that, and his record speaks for himself.